Hello and thank you for joining us today here on the Motor City Church YouTube channel. I'm Dr. Dave, lead pastor at Motor City Church, and we are so excited to connect with you and to bring you a life-changing, life-giving message that's filled with hope. I encourage you, take just a moment, hit that subscribe button. Come on, while you're here, go ahead, hit the subscribe button so we can stay connected. You'll get notified. And then also make sure that you like the video after you're done. If what you hear helped you, I'd love to hear how. Go to that comment section, say hello, give us a little, a little idea of what spoke to you today. Let's stay connected together. Please do that, and we look forward to seeing you maybe real soon at Motor City Church. Today's message, well, I believe, is going to be a great encouragement to you and to your life. Come on, if you love Jesus, open your mouth and give him a praise today. Oh, come on, 930. Just remain standing. I want to pray. What about Dr. Dave and Christine Martin? What incredible leaders. Come on, put your hands together for your leaders today. Man, what, what amazing leaders. But I would say this, they're incredible friends. We've done life together for a long time. My daughters and Solomon grew up together. And, uh, you know, it's one thing to go to a place to preach when you're invited is because you're acquainted with someone. It's another thing to be invited by a friend. And I am so honored to be back at Motor City. I want to pray over you today. I love to get you to stand especially at the early service. I want to make sure you're awake when I start. <laughs> if you go to sleep on me, that's my fault. But there's something that's happening in the kingdom right now. I believe there's transition in the kingdom. Anybody been in transition? I've been in transition. My family's been in transition. I can't believe we've come out of a season like we've just come out of and God not be up to something. I did not see a global pandemic on the horizon but it never caught the kingdom off guard. I did not see a crazy political climate that we walked through and were walking through, but it does not make the heavens nervous. I, did never, I didn't see gas going to $19 a gallon, but it hasn't bankrupt the heavens. I'm gonna to speak to you for just a few moments today on the subject destined for victory. Yes. Father, I pray today and I thank you for the gift of Dr. Dave and Christine Martin. Father, I thank you for this beautiful family, this beautiful family of faith. So thankful to be back at Motor City Church today, Father. And I just pray today that you would speak in this moment that would unlock a season. Father, I pray today, Father, that you would allow us to hear, allow us to see, and then allow us to go. And Father, I pray today for an anointing on me to speak, this congregation to hear, and let us all be the body of Christ. And we will give you praise in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Come on, one more time. Put your hands together. You can be seated today. I begin to put this message together. And I begin to think about the title. And I told you it was called Destined for Victory. I thought about calling it what heaven starts, hell cannot stop. Thought about calling it, it's in the bag. And we'll talk about that in a few moments. You know, in the book of 2 Corinthians, the writer declares this to us, the church. A breathed word over 2,000 years ago given, but relevant today. You know, this timeless and spaceless God we serve has the ability to step into our crazy now, cover our messed up yesterday, and declare our prophetic future all with one word. He's not bound by your moment. He's not nervous about your past, and he's not frightened of your future. He doesn't dwell in your day or your night, your week or your month. He lives in eternity. He was, he is, and he is to come. And when you realize that this timeless and spaceless God is working for you. Matter of fact, the writer says this in 2 Corinthians chapter 1. For all, somebody shout all. all. For all the promises of God in him are yes and in him, amen, to the glory of God through us. Yes, sir. God has not only gotten it to you, but his desire is to get it through you. And when you realize God marks you for a purpose, his desire is to get you to the right place at the right time and for you to have the revelation that you're the one. You're the one called for this season. 
You're the one anointed for this season. You've been positioned for this time. You were built to make it through a global pandemic. You were built to walk through this season and fight the good fight of faith. And when you realize that God designed you for this season, it changes everything. When you realize you've been assigned and anointed. When you realize that this God that moves us from glory to glory. This God that moves us from season to season. This God that moves us from faith to faith is working on our behalf. When you're moving from glory to glory, what you have to make, you make sure is that you don't get stuck in those two little letters. They seem insignificant, but yet so important. It's the hallway of your faith. It's that place of transition. It's those two little letters, a T and an O. It's where you're not where you used to be, but you're not yet where you're going. You may not be in your familiar yesterday, but you're not yet in your prophetic tomorrow. It's that place where Jesus told Peter, Satan desires to sift you as wheat. Yes, not when you're walking on water and not in Acts chapter 2, the upper room experience, but in the hallway of your faith. But then he said this, I've got good news, Peter. I'm praying for you in the hallway. If you fall, get back up. Matter of fact, I want to speak prophetically over you. When you come out of the hallway, come out with a testimony. Strengthen the brother. Tell him what it is to fight the good fight of faith. Tell him what it is to get knocked down, but get back up. Tell him what it is to walk through the valley of a shadow of death, but declare, I will fear no evil because you've anointed my head with oil and my cup is running over. Tell them what it is to become prophetic in the valley where you declare, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and forever. There is something about knowing that people that have come through something. I love to walk through battles with people that understand the battle. I love to walk through people uh, seasons with people that understand the power of testimony. The writer says you've been marked. The message Bible says you've been stamped with the yes of Jesus. God's yes and our yes together. When you realize that you've been marked, it changes everything. But there are those seasons that you walk through where, where the Holy Spirit begins to align you for the next season. I, I feel like I've been in a season of alignment. It's where God aligned you with your, his word for this season. He aligned you for the mission of the kingdom and the assignment that's on this season. I believe every season of assignment requires a season of alignment. A few months ago, I was walking through the Atlanta airport and I had a crick in my neck. Anybody ever got a crick in your neck? I had grabbed a bag over out of an overhead. and I looked like Frankenstein. <laughs> Pastor Chopper, when I talked to people, I had to turn. I mean, I had something going on. And I was walking through the Atlanta airport and at gate A17, there's a kiosk that is a chiropractor. I've never seen it. It's in the Atlanta airport. It's called the chiroport. Sometimes you don't see what you need until you need it. But God stations things in our journey. I walked over to the Cairo port. I began to talk with the lady. I said, I've got something going on with my neck. She said, if you'll lay down on the table for $59, I'll give you a quick adjustment. Right there in the Atlanta airport, I laid on a table. My wife, Casey's there. We drop our bag. She's looking around to make sure nobody's watching. And she grabs my neck, adjusts my neck. I felt instant relief. And then I said this to her. I said, you know, it's kind of interesting to see a chiropractic kiosk in the Atlanta airport. She said, we're popping up in many major cities and in many major airports. And then she said this, because we found out that travelers that carry baggage often get out of alignment. I said, that was worth the $59 right there. And there are some things because of where you've been. If you do not allow the Holy Spirit, it will affect you where you're going. But I've got good news. This timeless and spaceless God that is always in our yesterday, but yet standing in our tomorrow. But the Bible said he's a very present help in a time of trouble. That allows me to rise up in my now and believe that he's covered my past. But look with expectation to my tomorrow. Anybody at Motor City believe God is taking you somewhere? Come on. Put your hands together this morning. And he moves us from glory to glory. I want to look at the life of David. We're going to go back to Sunday school for a few moments. Any Sunday school kids in the house? I'm a Sunday school kid. 
It wasn't like Sunday school at Motor City Church. I grew up when it was flannel board. Anybody remember flannel board? It's where they put the David and Moses on the flannel board. About midway through, he started coming off. You know, a teacher would have to go back and push him back on. My dad's a pastor. I grew up in church. We're going to talk about the life of David today. 1 Samuel chapter 16. A prophet named Samuel shows up at the house of Jesse. Because God had declared there was a king in the house. I've come to Motor City to declare today there's a king in the house. There's a priest in the house. There's an anointing in the house. There's a called one, a chosen one, a marked one. And in verse 10 it said this, Then Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen these. And Samuel said to Jesse, Are all these the young men? Then he said, There remains the youngest, but he is watching the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes. So he sent and brought him. Now he was ruddy, bright-eyed, and good-looking. And the Lord said, arise and anoint him. Arise and anoint him, for he is the one. Then Samuel took a horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And in the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. And Samuel rose and went to Ramah. We find that David is in the field and he's talking to God about God. Then God begins to talk to Samuel about David. I found out if you'll talk to God about God, he'll talk to the right people, the right places, the right things about you. David's just talking to God about God. I will bless you at all times. Your praise shall continually be in my mouth. David just began to talk to God about who he was, the beauty of his holiness. And God begins to speak to Samuel about David. He begins to tell Samuel to go to the house of Jesse and release an anointing over David. Now there's some things you have to know about the oil. It was a horn of oil that represented power and authority. It wasn't just a bowl of oil, a vat of oil, a bottle of oil, but it was a horn of oil. And they knew when the prophet showed up with a horn of oil, something significant was about to be declared. He arrives. Now there's some things about the oil that we have to understand. First, there's the purpose of the oil. The oil has two purposes, endowment and endorsement. To release power in your life, and mark you for service. Endowment and endorsement. But then there's the process of the oil. How the oil is made. First we find for oil to be made there has to be a crushing. It's when the olive is squeezed and what is in the olive is produced out of the olive. Could it be that the last season of your life was not enemy sent but heaven allowed? It wasn't to take you out but it was to set you up because God knew there was something in your spirit and if he was squeezed just hard enough it might get out of you. It was that last season of your battle that has now become a song of testimony in your now. There are some seasons that are not there to take us out but they're there to set us up they're allowed us to walk into the next season knowing who we are it's that crushing but then there's the mixing of the oil God told Moses in Exodus he said find choice spices he said calamus he said I want you to take calamus myrrh cassia and cinnamon I want you to mix them each one of these ingredients significant but yet also characteristics of the oil. I love the calamus plant. It only grows at high elevations. But what you have to know about this, this, little, this little plant almost looks like a weed. It's sensitive to the wind. When the wind blows, it doesn't bend with the wind. It moves with the wind. If you would see the calamus in a high elevation, it's almost like it dances with the cadence of a wind. I'm telling you, there's an anointing that allows you to move to a high elevation that when the wind begins to blow, you begin to move with the wind. If the wind moves right, you move right. If the wind moves left, you move left. If the wind stops, you stop. If the wind goes, you go. And these ingredients were mixed into the oil. But also in the process of the oil, there was the maturing of the oil. That's where the oil had to sit for a season. It was the waiting season of the oil. Anybody been in a waiting room? You've been waiting on God, waiting on a word, waiting on a promise, wondering, do you realize where I'm at? What I'm walking through, there was the maturing of the oil. 
But then there was the pouring of the oil. I believe the pouring of the oil is significant. But to get to the pouring of the oil, you have to understand the process of the oil and the purpose of the oil. But here's what I find with the pouring of the oil. Many times we think we find the oil. We run over here to find the oil. Then we run over here to find the oil. Then we run over here to find the oil. I found out many times the oil finds us. It'll find you in a dark place. It'll find you in an alone place. It'll find you when you're all by yourself or you're in a crowd of people. It'll show up at the least likely of times and seek you out. It showed up at the house of Jesse and it began to look for David. And the Bible said seven sons stood before the prophet, but none left with the power. And finally, the prophet said, are there any more sons? And this is what begins to happen. They immediately begin to disqualify David. He said, oh yeah, but he's the youngest. And then they said this, he's watching the sheep. You realize that wasn't an affirmational moment for David. Nobody wanted to watch the sheep. That's why it was so significant that shepherds were invited to the birth of Jesus. Because shepherds were never on the guest list. Jesus said, at my party, everybody's welcome. Yes, sir. Wise men, shepherds, angels. He said, he's watching the sheep. And I love what the prophet said. He said, send for him, for we will not sit down until he comes. There's some anointings that will not rest until you walk through the door. There are some seasons that will not give up until you walk through the door. There are some promises that you've been marked with that is a yes and an amen over your life that will not rest. He said, send for him and we will not rest or sit down until he comes. They sent for David and hurriedly David came in from the field. Seven brothers had already stood in position but none left with the power and the minute this shepherd walked in he didn't look like a king. The Bible said he was bright eyed, ruddy and good looking. He was short in stature and the Bible said the minute he walked through the door, the Holy Spirit said arise and anoint him for he is the one. And the Bible said David would kneel because here's the posture of, of receiving the oil. It's a posture of humility. The Bible said he knelt in the midst of his brothers, in the midst of his haters, in the midst of those that saw nothing in him and the oil began to flow. I'm telling you somebody God's about to anoint in the midst of the naysayer and those that wrote you off the list on those that gave up on your anointing those that told you it could not happen it would not happen it never will but I'm telling you there's some Davids being called in from the field there's some Davids that God is calling in I'm trying to hurry because I'm on a timer but here's what happens here's what happens the Bible said in the midst of his brothers he's anointed to be the next king of Israel. Wow. But here's what the question is. The Bible said he did not go to the throne. He sent back to the field to watch sheep. Can you still watch sheep when you know you're anointed to be a king? Can you go back to the field when you know your season has not yet come? I'm anointed, but not ready. I'm anointed, but not now. I've been called, but not in this moment. The Bible said he went back to the field to watch sheep. And one day the Bible says his father called for him and he was about to get promoted. The Bible said he ran in and he may be thinking it's my time to ascend the throne. But when he gets there, the Bible said his assignment was this. Take lunch and supplies to your brothers. The brothers that saw me anointed to be the next king. The Bible said he was anointed in the midst of his brothers. Sometimes God calls you to serve those you will one day lead. It's the test of leadership. Can I wash your feet even though I'm going to be the king of all glory? And the Bible said he packs up the supplies and he takes them to his brother. And you know this story. The Bible said the people of God are at war. But when he arrives on the battlefield, the mighty men are nowhere to be found. The king is in hiding. And finally, David discovers his brothers because there is a giant named Goliath that has stood on a hillside and moved into a valley and roared for 40 days 
and 40 nights. Morning and night, the Bible said, he would roar and intimidate the people of God. Now, what you have to understand, morning and night was not just a time of the day, but it was the Jewish time of worship and communion. And the enemy knows if he can get between you and your worship, he will separate you from your destiny. In the morning, he would roar. And in the evening, he would roar. He would step out the mountain into the valley and tell them who they were and what their future would be. But a young worshiper showed up and he looked around and finally he asked, is there not a cause? Will nobody go out and fight this giant? His brothers were mad. The mighty men were frustrated. But before long, David was in the presence of the king and the king asked him, he said, why do you think you can fight this giant? Your brothers will not go out to fight. The mighty men will not go out to look at you. You're, you're a young man. You're not very big. He's massive. Even I, the great king, will not go out. And David said, oh, I don't know. But there's something that just tells me as he's standing in alignment with our destiny that there is victory in the camp. Matter of fact, one time I was in the field worshiping and a bear came along. And another time I was just over here riding and a lion came along. And God gave me power to defeat the lion and defeat the bear. And I just have to believe that today the same God that delivered me before can deliver me again. I want You know, if you've ever come out of one season and with the testimony, you can walk through the next season. If you've ever had to fight a battle in your yesterday, you know the enemy in your tomorrow is no foe. That's why you have to make up your mind that you are anointed and you are called. That if God be for you, what or who can be against you? You have to make up your mind that you're going to be the prophet of your own life. I'm not going to wait on a preacher or somebody else, but I'm going to look in the mirror and declare you are anointed. You are called. You are highly faithful. You are the head and not the tail. You are the first and not the last. King tried to wrap David in his armor, but it wouldn't fit. Saul was tall. David shortened stature. We try to wrap ourselves in everybody else's identity. Especially in this social media world we live in. The spirit of comparison is killing the church. Amen. Wouldn't fit. Tried to put his sword in David's hand. But the sword had been crafted for someone with long reach and had not been tested. So David left the armor, left the sword. I'm sure thank the king. But David decided he would just stay with what got him to where he was at. And the Bible said before he went to public battle, he went over here to private worship. And the Bible said David knelt by a brook. And at that flowing brook, something happened. David reached in a brook of water and pulled out five stones. And the Bible said he put those stones in a shepherd's bag. I believe David knew that because he had been in a private place, victory was in the bag. I believe he knew because he had been in a place of communion at the brook, he knew that there was grace in the bag. I believe he had a word in the bag. And the Bible said David began to stroll towards the battlefield. But David had some inside information. The Bible said the valley was named Soka and it belonged to Judah. David was from the tribe of Judah. David was from the house of Judah. David knew the valley had already been given to his family. He knew the giant had picked the wrong valley. If you ever know that God has assigned you and anointed you and placed you and set you, you know he's given you authority and I believe David knew the minute he stepped into the valley, victory was already in the bag and the Bible said the giant began to move into place and he began to roar he began to demise David and look at David and, and begin to say things like this who are you am I a dog that they would send a young boy but all David did was reach in the bag and open his mouth with a prey he said I don't come to you with a sword or a spear I didn't even bring the king's armor I've just come to you in the name of the Lord the name that is above all name and this will be your last day somebody needs to declare to the giant today is your last Last day. This is your last day. You intimidate me. This is the last day you keep me from my destiny. And he reached in the bag. Somebody shout, it's in the bag. And he reached in the bag and pulled out an ordinary rock. I found out ordinary things become supernatural when you've been by the brook. Reached in the bag, got an ordinary rock, put it in an ordinary sling, and he released it. 
And the Bible said it lodged in the head of the giant. The giant fell over. David walked over and took the sword of the giant that would later become a testimony in David's journey. And the Bible said he took the head of the giant, picked up the head of the giant. I know this sounds gory, but it's in your Bible. The Bible said he took the head of the giant back to King Saul's court. And he said, is this the voice? Is this the voice that has kept you at bay for 40 days? Is this the intimidating voice that told you there was no tomorrow? Is this the intimidating voice that tried to step into a valley that already belonged to the people of God? Is this the voice that told your family there was no future and no hope? Is this the voice that told you your best days were behind you? Is this the voice that said there was no ministry in your future? Is this the voice that said God has forgot about you? But I want you to know something happened. The Bible said David. David never went back to the field, but he dwelt in the palace from that day forward. There are some giants not there to take you out, but to set you up. And could it be that the giant of your now season is the stepping stone to your next season? What tried to take you out is getting ready to be a testimony. What was my ceiling is now my platform. It's time that the church rises up. We've been in hiding too long. We've hit against culture. We've hit against the media. We've hit against the intimidation voices but I'll tell you the lion of the tribe of Judah is about to roar and he's roaring through the church he's roaring through the people of God they're reaching the bag and grab a rock and declare it's in the back victory is in the back anointing is in the back authority is in the back I've been marked with a yes and I've been marked with an amen something begins to happen something begins to take place a few years ago, I was invited on a trip, and I was walking through a season. I was just in one of those, I, I can't even, I was in a funk. Anybody ever just been in a funk? I, 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 you know, I was being blessed, but I was still heavy. It wasn't my family. The family was doing good. It wasn't my church. A church was growing. It was a battle taking place right here. Most of the things that take you out start right here. Your thoughts. I was walking through one of those seasons, and I got a call to go on a trip with a group of ministers. And when I heard about the trip, I just heard the Holy Spirit speak to me and say, this is a kingdom moment. I found out many times we're looking for seasons, but God gives us moments. And I found out you miss the moment, you'll miss the season. But if you ever grab hold of a kingdom moment, it will thrust you into a season. I felt it was a kingdom moment. I didn't know why. So I booked my ticket and I made preparation. And when I get to the airport to go on the trip that day, a storm had moved in. There was lightning and weather just got, just changed quickly there in Tampa. Finally watching the monitor, I realized I might miss my connecting flight. So I grabbed my app and my iPhone and I began to look at my connecting flight and I realized that I was probably going to miss the flight. Delta doesn't wait on me. They just close the door and go. I only realized I was going to miss my connecting body. I get up to go over to the gate agent to tell the gate agent that I was just going to stay in Tampa. I couldn't find any more flights. I missed the trip. But before I could say anything, the lady behind the gate said, Pastor. I didn't know her. I didn't want her to know that. So I said, Sister. <laughs> she said, Pastor, you don't know me. We go to the East Lake campus. We've not been coming that long. But Pastor, just let me tell you that the atmosphere of the house is changing the atmosphere of our house. I said, Pastor, one of our sons that was away from Jesus has now come home. The message series on faith has unlocked something in us. We've been praying over our family. Me and my husband have been joining together in faith, and God's doing so many things in our life. She said, Pastor, my name's Jackie. So honored to meet you. I said, Jackie, that testimony encouraged me today. Thank you. Then she said, Pastor, what can I do for you? I said, well, Jackie, I was going on this trip with this group of pastors. I'm going to miss my connecting flight. I don't want to be stuck in the Houston airport. She looked at me and said, Pastor, you're going to make that flight. I said, Jackie, I'm thinking maybe, Jackie, there's another route, another flight, another airline. I said, Jackie, is there another flight? She said, I'm not sure. I'm just going to pray you make it. Well, I wanted to look like the man of faith and power. I'm like, oh, Jackie, that's awesome. Praise the Lord. Now, my faith meter is not high. I go sit back down. We sat there another 15, 20 minutes. Finally, they let us on the plane. 
sitting in my seat waiting, and it feels like an eternity. It's about 15 minutes. Finally, I'm going to miss my connecting flight. I push the button. The flight attendant comes over. And he said, can I help you? I said, I think I'm going to grab my bags and get off the plane. And I'm right in the middle of writing a book, Pastor Chopper, and called The Door to More. And he said this. He said, I'm getting ready to close the door. Hurry. When he said that, something grabbed me. I said, you know, I guess I'll stay if you're closing the door. He comes back over a few minutes later. He said, Mr. Stewart, you'll be all right. I said, are you sure? He said, yeah, you'll make your connecting flight. I said, man, we're almost an hour late. That flight's scheduled to take off. How can you be so sure I'm going to make my connecting flight? And then he said this. He said, because the pilot of this plane is the pilot of your next plane. He said, it cannot take off until you arrive. I'll tell you what happened. Me and the pilot... We landed in Houston. I didn't get off with everybody else. Me and the pilot walked down a ramp. They put us in a car. Delta drove us to the next plane. I was on the plane before everybody else. I'll tell you what happened right there on that runway. I forgot about my trip. I've been walking through a season. I was stuck in a valley. But right there on that runway, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He said, Tony, I'm not only flying this leg of the journey. I'm flying the next leg of the journey and the next leg of the journey. And I've got your death. City. I've come to Motor City to tell somebody it's in the bag. If heaven sent it, hell cannot stop it. God has already covered you. Amen. The Bible said there were three anointings in David's life. He was anointed in his father's living room. He was anointed to be king of Judah. And then he was anointed to be king of all of Israel. And the Bible said when the enemy heard that he became the king of Israel, they began to unite all their forces. And the Bible said they moved to destroy not only David's kingdom, but to kill him. Same enemy that he faced in a valley. Same Philistines that he defeated with the rock. But now there's not one giant, there's armies. Sometimes we face the same enemies. But God has to give us new strategies. He said, David, a rock and a sling won't work this time. But he said... But I want you to do this. Take your army. And I want you to reposition your army on the side of the mulberry trees. Realign your armies. But wait on me. Do not move until you hear the rippling of the wind in the top of the trees. Do not move until you know that I've arrived. Reposition your army and then wait on me. David, the Bible said David began to reposition the army. And the Bible said the Philistines begin to approach. And all of a sudden David heard the rippling of the wind in the top of the mulberry trees. And he knew that God had showed up. And the Bible said that David began to defeat the enemy from one city to the next. And the fame of David grew in all the land. There are some moments where he said, in this season that I'm realigning you. In this season I'm repositioning you. I'm going to give you a new strategy. I'm going to give you a new vision. I'm going to give you a fresh word. But do not move until you hear the rippling of the wind. Do not move until the oil begins to flow. But once the wind begins to flow, once the wind begins to blow and the oil begins to flow, I want you to rise up. Rise up Judah with a shout. Rise up with a word in your spirit. Rise up in a, in, in a posture of warfare. Rise up believing that God has already declared. There are those moments where God says, get ready, I'm opening a door and I'm taking you in and taking you through because you've already been marked for destiny. Come on, stand with me this morning. I want to pray in just a moment. We're going to pray two prayers. We're going to pray a prayer so that we can make sure everybody in this room and those watching online have committed their life to Jesus. Sometimes we preach about the blessed life. We just don't give them access to the blessed life. Then we're going to pray that if you're here, maybe there's a giant standing on the hillside today. Maybe you've been in the field worshiping all alone. Maybe you've been in that waiting process. But today, God will remind you that you're marked. You know, I was coming out of the airport yesterday and I was loaded down with bags and I was on my cell phone and I realized I had to get through the doors that were ahead of me. I'm talking on my cell phone to my office and I've got all my bags and I realize I've 
needed to get through the door that was in front of me. But the closer I got to the door, the more I realized that the door I was getting ready to walk through, I didn't have to push it open. I didn't have to unlock it. I didn't have to kick it open. All I had to do was keep moving because it was an automated door. And all I had to do was get close enough to the door to hit a sensor. And the minute that I got close enough to the door with all my baggage and my phone in my hand, the doors just opened. Some of you are right there getting ready to hit a sensor. The Holy Spirit said it's in the back. Your private season is getting ready to be on public display. Where you've been in your last season has been setting you up for your next season. God been bringing an army out of Egypt and they found themselves stuck in a Red Sea and God asked for one thing of Moses all he asked was this to take what's in your hand his staff God only asked you to steward what he's given you he said get right to the edge of where you've never been the edge of the Red Sea and begin to stretch and the Bible said with an army on his trip People around him complaining. The Bible said it was a night season. The Bible said Moses got right to the edge of where he had never been. And the Bible said he took what he had in his hand and he began to stretch. And the Bible said when Moses began to stretch, God began to breathe. And the Bible said all night long, God breathed over those waters and a doorway began to open and they began to march through. And when they got on the other side, revival broke out on a riverbed. They began to sing and they began to dance. Mary began to play the tambourine. And the Bible said God brought them out and set them up for a promise. But then the Bible says God silenced their adversary never to be heard from again. Could it be that when the giant falls, God not only releases you into a next season, he silences the voice of your yesterday. He silences those things that have tried to tell you no, tried to tell you that you can't and never will. Come on, just bow your heads with me. I'm going to ask two questions today and then the team's going to come and lead us in worship. Maybe you're here and you say, Pastor, I need to invite Jesus into my life. Come on, he's the one that gives you access to a victorious life. Maybe you're here and you say, Pastor, that's me. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand come down front. I'm just going to ask everyone in this room to pray a prayer with you today. Would you just say this? Say, Jesus, I invite you in to my life. I ask you to be the Lord of my life. And I pray today, believing that as you come into my life, you are going to forgive me as I repent of all of my sins. And today, because I've called on your name and you've redeemed my life, I am a child of God. I've been washed, I have been cleansed, and I have been free. And from this day forward, from this day forward, I will live for you. Amen and amen. In a few moments, if you prayed that prayer, they're going to give you some instructions. But just maybe there's some in this room today that there's been a giant on your hillside or you've been in the field waiting for purpose. Or maybe you've been in the process of the crushing. You've been in the place of waiting and maturing. But today the oil has found you and it has marked you. say, Pastor, I just believe that it's in the bag. I'm going to pray over you today. Come on, if that's you and you're believing that your next season will be a greater season, that you've been anointed for this moment and you've been called and assigned to this moment, come on, just slide your hand up. I'm going to pray a blessing over you today before they come back. Father, I pray today, believing that every hand that has been raised 
every hand, Father, that has been lifted, declaring, Father, that their next season will be a greater season, and what is before them is better than what is behind them, Father. Everyone that has rised up, declaring it's in the bag. Giants are beginning to fall. Crooked places are being made straight, and prodigals are coming home. Matter of fact, Holy Spirit, I heard you speak to me the first Sunday of this year that this would be the year of the prodigal. And I declare over, over every prodigal of Motor City, they are coming home. Every lost son, every lost daughter, every lost spouse. Father, we declare you are finding them and you are bringing them home. Every giant is beginning to fall. Every crooked place is being made straight. And we are being marked with fresh oil and a fresh wind is propelling us into the promise. And Father, I declare over this house and every family connected to this house that greater days are on the horizon for they've been marked for this season. I declare in the name that is above every name, the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Now put your hands together. Come on, give it praise. I hope that today's message was an encouragement to you. And if it was, I'm going to ask you to take just a minute to hit that like button. Also hit the subscribe button and well, you'll be the first to know when a new life-changing message, life-giving message comes out. We'd love to hear from you as well. So make sure that you put your comments down there below. Come on, just write down there. Maybe share something that you got out of the message because I believe that'll be an encouragement to someone else. And maybe they'll go and listen to the message themselves. We look forward to connecting with you more. So please go and visit MotorCityChurch.org. That's MotorCityChurch.org. Dot org And, well, you can tune in anytime here on the Motor City YouTube channel and find other messages that I believe will encourage you and just give you a little dose of hope. Hey, make the rest of your life the best of your life.